So the right of choosing is the main thing that this work is that I provide with somatic consent is keeping this flame activated. So the right of choosing and being connected to the right of choice, super important for all of us. And that's when I ask you to choose an object in your hand. Yeah? So if you choose anything in your hand and put that just because you can choose that and not to um, feed my desire that I want you to put something in your hand so by choice. And what I would like to invite you into is just to get really relaxed as much as you like. So this is what we call in somatic consent, the waking up the hands exercise or waking up the hands in general, where you take this object in your hand and just make connection with it while you lean back. So put your hands in your lap, relax your shoulders, relax your spine. Put a little down that you can see my body, how I do that. So I have my hands here and I hold that in my hands. Oh, and the invitation is to slow down your speed of movement by half. So that might even mean you stop completely. And then start with some micro movements. And with this micro movements, I invite you to explore so that you choose your action. And by exploration, you can discover different things. And I would like to invite you into is to explore this pleasant sensation somewhere on your on your skin, on your hands, maybe between your fingers, and maybe on your palm. And maybe your fingertips or your nail bed. Let's play with some different dynamics. You either hold one hand still and move the object over it, or you hold the object and move your hand over it so that you have access to your action towards the felt sense of pleasure. It's this electromagnetic tinglish sensation. So without a goal, without any agenda, without going anywhere, I just invite you to stay there for a few moments and just enjoy the experience and the sensation in your skin. Just notice what you notice in your body, physically, emotionally, mentally, and bring your attention straight back and you notice what you notice to your hands. You might want to experiment with keeping your eyes closed or keeping them open or alternating whenever you feel like. See what works better for you. Feel what works better.
And slowly and gentle. I invite you to bring your attention back to the screen while you choose if you want to stay with that object in connection with your hands or not, or you want to stop it so that you just have access to this while we're here on that call, or that you have access to that whenever you want in your life. Um, so, and each of one of you knows here that this is the direct route, the inflow, and that's the default, the core of everything that we're doing. So this needs to be in place for each one of us. We just want to go deeper into the dynamics of the entire system and how that works, and why we. I want to bring so much emphasis on this specific dynamic is because it's so vital to have that going and have access to that because that's the first yeah I would call it the first activation of our individualism that we can go in action towards a felt sense of pleasure in ourself when we were little before we had developed our personality. So this as a default always was there and always will be there. And when this comes online again, we have the power of choice in every little cell of our skin from an embodied place, neurologically in our nervous system in connection with our feelings and thoughts and our action. Any reflections on that? Anybody would like to share anything? Yes, yes, yes. Please. This weekend, um, last weekend, I could try with groups, different, um, a, a sequence of touching the object. So first the object and then touching your hand and then touching the other and then touching and receiving. And um, I had a lot of questions came from the group. And um, the thing that we observed is that the default mode is super good to have this as a core so that you can always come back when you were lost when you were touching another person. So you try always to come back to the English. But um, there are few people that couldn't come back to the English when they are touching another person. Mm -hmm. They lose total, it's like a short secret in the brain. Yes. And you don't know anymore if you were uh, you, you can slightly feel the tinglish, but then you don't feel the other person or, or something like that, that things doesn't, yeah, the connection is just like, like, like bad internet, you know, just, yeah. Um, and um, I, I, I ask if, uh, if there is something, uh, what are the things that we can, tools that we can give to this, people or to everybody when when you were touching another person that you you can only feel yours and you don't feel anymore the other or you know yeah it's, it's, it's a great question so so what you can do that you not getting lost in other people's responses and losing your connection to your own skin when you touching somebody else even if you found it before when you touch an object is the first First point is praxis, 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 and more praxis. So this is why I say, you know, it just takes three months. And I, I, I did this 64 days waking up the hand challenge. And that's, that was for the idea, just like to get that really in the system. But then it's not to get stuck there as well, because we need this 
touch and connection to other people so losing ourselves so the exercise here that you can do is you just have somebody um doing this exercise with an object and with the hands simultaneously and we will go there in the second module in the training um, how to do that when you have the foundation course running so that you have people sitting next to another so they're both leaning against the wall and you have um the the person it's not really necessary but this is the best way so the, the person who is giving the hand putting their hand in the other person's lap or on the cushion and then you have an object and you have the hand and then you're feeling your hand on an object in the in the sense of pleasure and then you just move over to the other person's hand and then you go back to the object and then go over to the hand and then to the object and you do that alternating and it sometimes takes five to ten minutes or so till it really clicks that the story that we put on touching somebody else's hand is just happening in our head because it's a different set of energy yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I'm super is... happy because I, I did with a rope. So yeah. everybody got a rope, a big rope. So we were all connected with this rope. That was the object. Yes. And uh, and uh, you could flip from the rope to the floor, another object, or to your lap, or to the other. But what you're saying, it's more precise, so that I can really stay there before going moving because yes. we, we did other things but yeah, yeah. so that because it was an exploration contact Sunday so I explored yeah. different things of touching and feeling the touch in the body yeah and um, so I see uh, the import so you see that five minutes like from a inanimated object to a uh, animated to a, a live person. Yes. Yeah. it's enough to try to get the click yeah it's just, it's the same practice when i said 64 days just with an object probably needs yeah. another 64 days if you, but people will really have difficulties to alternate between an object and the hands mm -hmm. that that really clicks in and and the 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 saying really makes sense here when the hands will get it the rest of the body will get it because when your action that what you do is related just to your hands and you don't engage your sympathetic nervous system in big movements or anything because big mm -hmm. movements having a different set of neurological wiring and you feel mm -hmm. less the more you move or when you have your sympathetic moving so when you just sit relax and just only move your hands it just clicks much easier and um, you can choose much easier how much do you want to move when you touch other people because most people, when they then go in action and touching other people, they're having very quick this going in action and giving. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. But but yeah, and then they have the the observation. Yeah. Just go in that in a few moments. But the main thing is what is switching when they're going into the indirect route where I want to go in uh, today. When they're switching their their internalized. Um, wiring switches from receiving doing it for myself in giving something and making it more about the other person than about themselves and that's pretty much based on this dynamic of um, um uh, doing versus done to uh, no no let's say it that way it's dependent on when when we can't feel ourselves anymore because our doing becomes a giving that's that's the switch and that's related to sympathetic action i got it the thing is that i also said that the, here we have a lot of nerve endings right in the feet but then when you are engaging even your body in the floor so that you can try to find distinguished sensation elsewhere even that is already more difficult for those who are oh, not yeah. active yeah, totally. so they get lost and they don't feel and then they realize they are not feeling so they come back to the object yes and yeah. all the time yeah. finding the rope somewhere so the rope would be the like the bouée de secours would be the 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 saver so you get the rope and then you you just stay it's a great but, idea i like that, it's, 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 I, like that. <laughs> I hope other people you know. get inspired by that too yeah thank you for the question anybody else has any question or comment to that what uh, christiana just said or anything else to this what we just did before yeah please please yeah, I'm just I'm just curious. So taking that a bit bit further, um, 
Are you able to stay 100% in yourself all the time when you're with a full body? Is that a question to me? That's a question to okay. you, yeah. This is a great question. Am I staying constantly 100% connected <laughs> to myself when I was another body? That would be really stupid and silly because <laughs> if I would be 100% in connection to myself, mm. I would probably be a selfish prick and would not take in consideration how the other person <laughs> feels and what's going on in them. So we need the indirect route. So, so I've seen that in, you know, in, in uh, um, older kind of consent and inflow teaching where the indirect route got kind of demonized and kind of made wrong. And, you know, you're just in your shadow and you just look at somebody when you just do it. Um, I think 100% is not healthy. What is uh -huh. important here is that this becomes our default. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. that the yeah. other one is super important. And I just want to show you in a few seconds the, the graphic about direct and indirect. Um, so that, I mean, most of you know that already, but this is really, really important. When somebody has this activated in their skin, in their hands, and I feel that when people have that. Yeah. But if they're touching me then, but they can't feel me, because this is, you know, the mirror neurons, and I just want to, my nervous system wants to be open as well. I want that person who is touching me who is connection to their inflow. I want them to be capable of feeling. I want to be felt and I want to feel to be felt. Otherwise, I'm not interested. My, my nervous system is not capable of, there's no engagement in there. So therefore, it's really, really important that we have to have the indirect route as well open, but by choice, have the direct route as, as default. And that's the switch between giving and receiving when it comes to engaging with a lover or with a play buddy or on, a, on an individual intimate level or if we're doing that for work and we're having a client or we're just working with people hands-on because the indirect route is super 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 important that we can feel other people mm -hmm. but as well when it comes to private touch um, my indirect route is my superpower you know I, I can I, it's, it's not only the sensing feeling that I can be aware of my hands I can emotionally, mentally, physically, energetically, on so many really levels, so many levels, feel the other persons, and you know, my new reception can read neurological cues in the other person. They are really, really important to engage and to play. So, yeah. hundred percent direct route? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just wondering if you could, you know, like, like. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you decided, right, yeah. I'm just, this is just what I'm going to do. I'm, yeah, whether you could stay in that. You know. I, have, right. I have a question. I have a question. Uh, one one, one have second, a... Christiane. One second. Christiane. Yes. I, uh, so, so the important piece is I know that I could do that. And sometimes I do that and I go just selfishly for the direct route only. And when I go really into feeling myself only i going as well into a, it's not a shame or guilt response but it's kind of is a residue of that where i start to feel fuck i'm a selfish prick and i'm just like just doing it for myself yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and and, yeah. and i imagine that when i do that that this will be picked up by the other person and that's not what i want i just want the connection yeah, because I've noticed that I that I have that that and that actually I want that I want to be that selfish prick sometimes. Sometimes, sure, yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I want to like, be selfish. Prick. It's my fucking turn. I've given yeah. so much, and now I just want to fucking. I want it all to be about me. Yeah, so. Yeah. Thank fuck you. yes. <laughs> yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> sure. Okay. The no, question yeah. goes exactly there because. Um, I told this, uh, the couples, okay, people that were really partners that of this selfish thing and they felt guilt, they felt shame and then go riding over that and going deeper on that and etc. But then I would like to have, if you can give me more cues or tips on what can you say about the connection that this is not about just, you can be selfish for a moment and that's wonderful, but then how how you because i told them that both need to be um activated and and aware of this inflow and outflow so that connection can exist that contact is not the same of connection and we work a lot on that but other things about how how they can keep feeling each other into me 
like that. Mm. Um, I like your enthusiasm and your kind of working forward. So, so we just did the first module of the year training. What was literally, you just activate that, you show that to people, we do the consent lab and then you do empowerment massages. So the second module will be radically about the foundation course and how to do that with people in a the, in the bigger setting. And then the, the next step is how do you do that in relationship and how do you implement that in relationship? So, so I don't want to take that all before. So, so there, there is a way. And what I can say now is that, and we played with that in the first module a little bit when it comes to the dynamic of simultaneous feeling another. Yeah, so this structure will not happen in the dynamics that we play with in the three minute game and we're activating the hand and feeling yourself on somebody else. It happens in the simultaneous engagement at the same time. The inflow is open in both hands while they're both in action and that's the apex dynamic. And the apex dynamic is a very intimate place that um, um, is not really happening energetically in the realm of the three minute game because when you're with your lover or when couples together and when they want to play you know you 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 don't want to do the okay let's stop and debrief how does it feel in your body what was going on there you know that's like this is the end of of love making and um it's the same thing as if you have you know um and, and this is something i can give you right now and that you can use when you work with couples because it's really important when when I'm engaging with another person, I have this, um, so I say in the first place, you come play the three minute game and open up the inflow, but then I don't wanna ask every five seconds if I can touch your shoulder, can I touch your face? No, I can touch your boobs, can I touch your butt, can you touch your, your hands, can I, uh, or, you know, this is just a killer. So that I give this, this um, holistic permission that we don't have to ask each other every five seconds and that we then taking full responsibility about our limits if something happens to us, so as couples, that we don't like that we have to stop it or we have to say, okay, I can't give you more access. I'm not feeling it right now. I just have to make a pause here. I don't, I don't like that. So, so this is where the, um, I, I talked, about that more in a few moments, but to give you that, that this simultaneously touching that is happening in the apex while people feeling each other and having holistic permission about that. This is, this is the key component of this dynamics in lovemaking and for couples who are intimate relating. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. yeah, because we went a little bit further, but that's, thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. I mean, there's so much more to that. So, yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. Because they were feeling like they were both selfish and going further on this selfish thing of feeling, feeling, feeling. And the, the, the very fear of really connecting. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a big thing, like a big fear of connecting. They could yes. stay in contact for hours. Yeah. But yeah, you know, this is this is what I what I what I have seen for many people who have difficulties start to get, feel really is that they only getting lost in the direct route and then only doing the direct route without actually going into what else is going on in the body? What else do you feel? Is there a desire coming up? What's your sexual energy body doing? Or what's your physical sexual body doing? How do you want to merge? Where do you want to go? How much do you want to share? So there's a, there's a ton more and you will get it all. <laughs> um, I think Erica, you want to say something? You are just a little bit on the jump. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm, please. I, I just want to say um, that um, um, there's yeah, time is uh, an, ama an amazing, um, important um, piece in um, yeah, just taking the time to to be yeah, just be patient. I needed so much patience from and and yeah, of course softness and but patience to yeah, to to make myself 
go there and mm. um, in the right way. Nobody can force that. It's my mm. thing. It's my yeah. job. It's an inside job, radical. Yeah, and and sometimes I maybe want something else, but it's not yet. It's not there yet. So yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I want to say about this. And I like the the idea of going back to the um, objects. I'm I, I'm gonna try that in the consent lab. I'm gonna do um, yes. Going back to the uh, objects, like with what you say about uh, the rope. I love that idea. It's connection also, um, because then it has something to do with time. You can reverse the time going back mm -hmm. like that. Thanks. Um, can I say something to that? Yeah. So, so an important piece here is that when we play with people who have not played that way as we have done. So there will be a lot of people when we start to engage with, if we can engage ever again <laughs> in these times, that you know they have no experience there at all, or they have a very little experience. So each one of you ha who has done some work you know this is work on yourself embodiment is 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 personal individual development so you're an expert already you know when you play with people who have no idea you are you know you, you you're somewhere else and if you just think you engage with them on the same level this is just an illusion you're not and it's like what you say yeah so you might have the idea where you want to go but if the other person has not the capacity yet then you know it's a, it, it will be difficult, but it is what this leadership literally is, is just helping people to lead themselves and creating this level of where you can engage. Sometimes it means you just have to go down to people's capacity and then you lift them up. And sometimes you can't fucking bother because you just want to have somebody on your level where you can finally play with your capacity, <laughs> right? Okay. <laughs> I want to I want to give you this the the slides you want to see it? Yeah, okay. So you know them already, but what I want to do is I just want to explain them this time from another perspective, from another angle because I just saw something that I haven't really seen before. <laughs> and I was just clicking in myself and then I would like to share that with you. Um 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 um, um. We are here. All right. So um, everybody has seen the direct indirect um, route of the pleasure map, right? You know that. I guide you through that quickly, and then I come back to that picture that you have. The um, so, so this is when I work with people as well as with you, and most of you are there in the year training. So um, I, this is then an, an, an extra for Anne Marie that you're just getting an upgrade and everybody else who can see it in the outside as well. So, um, so when I teach that to people, this is how I guide people through it. So this is when we're waking up the hands. It is, is your action, is your motor. You know, you make the choices about what you want to do and you do that towards the sense of pleasure. So you move your hands, yeah, in the way how your nerve ending is getting stimulated and then this information goes into your brain and you feel your pleasure center. So that's the direct route per se. So this is what is happening. And when you slow down enough, um, so don't want to go into that. Um, but when you slow it down enough, your um, feeling center is getting activated. But if your feeling center is not getting activated, there's fear of intimacy or fear of connection or fear of um, too muchness or whatever the fear is, then the direct route will shut down to a degree. And when the direct route is shut down, and this is where I go in, and it's okay, why is the direct route shut down in your system? So let's go through that just for a few moments because we're all expert and when it shuts down. So when you want to feel, or when you see your people you're working with, start feeling what is the main thing you're aware of? Why is the direct route blocked? And please unmute yourself and speak it in here and I'll write it down. You mean the, the things that we watch on them, that, that the signs that gives me the thing? Usually yeah. they close the eyes and they go faster. Yeah, go faster. 
Mm. So it can be what you observe or what you experience in yourself. So because it's the same anyway. So it can be you go faster then. But you observe in people that go faster. Yes. For me, it's going into pleasing. Into pleasing. Mm. Yes. And trying to find uh, eye contact and getting connection with the person. Yeah, yeah. going outside of the body. Oh, getting outside. I've seen your hand, Vanessa, please. Uh, that might be along the same lines as me. As I was saying, I get distracted. I get, this yeah, distraction. Yeah. Distraction. It's not the right word. But... I can't hear you, Anne-Marie. Please, I, I guess you're muted. Uh, context, timing. If you're just so tired or um, other thing, appropriateness. Uh, you have to match the other. Oh, my goodness, there's so many. <laughs> have I gone off on a tangent? Yeah. Um, so much has to align. Yes. What else? Needing something more stronger. So... Um, harder, mm -hmm. stronger, hurtful, more, 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 mm -hmm. more sensation. Yes. So used to more um, intensity. Intensity, yes. Yeah. More intensity, yes. To feel more in order to feel more. I'll back her up on that one because I see that in kink world with masochists. Um, yeah. They can't, they freak out anything light, anything soft and light, they freak out. They need the intensity. Yeah, it's, it's, it's too subtle. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I, uh, you. They also, I see they, they sleep. They go to sleep. They, they get bored. They... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they fall asleep getting bored. That's so true. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boredom. Falling. Um. Asleep. Could the type of relationship you have with the person, um, like any yeah. grievances? Yeah, that? totally. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. So, so as you see that you know this this why it's blocked when you when you work with people the best resource is actually yourself when you know you know what's your own block sometimes um as as you said before lisa I, fuck i just want to be selfish i don't want to care about the other person um, um and then going just like totally in the direct route um can as well create a disconnection if the other people kind of doesn't feel connected to so uh, but anyway, that was just like, why is the direct route blocked and, and, and what's in the way? So, so this is what we just have kind of brainstormed and worked out. This is, you know, comes up again and again, the same thing. It's just like thinking too much. It's too shameful. I have memories of that's not right. There's, there's drama, fear, stress, trauma, uh, conditions of society, of tension in our body, control, all this issues so if the direct root all of these reasons they are based on conditionings are not working then the only thing that we have is when we touch another person to make them feel good so that our doing where we receive in the direct root becomes a doing and giving so we're changing neurologically the dynamic and and then when the person has the response that makes us feel good. And this is normally seen as the indirect route and something that is, um, yeah, what I said before, a little bit demonized. It's wrong, you know. That means we just have this finger pointing. No, you just do that because you just want to have a response. You're in the shadow. You are in the indirect route. And, well, to a degree... Maybe, yes. So the indirect route, I agree, is when we don't have the direct route activated, something that keeps us away from really deeper connection to ourselves and others. But to make that really as something that is dysfunctional is just not true. The important piece that I want to bring in here today is, let's see, um, is that when we have the direct route activated, 
we have to make intentionally when we doing and receiving so when we experiencing for ourselves we have to take the direct route as the first route as the default route and uh, taking the the indirect route as a second route you might want to call it a bonus you might want to call it an extra now here comes the piece that i actually that clicked in for me just now is when you do what you want yeah when it's for you and i always have talked about the two things that everyone has to take in consideration you have to put yourself first yeah so you have to be um uh, you have to be radically self-responsible for your experience and you have to be open enough and you have to have the capacity and resource to handle what comes up whatever that is that might be shame that might be awkwardness it doesn't matter but that is a self-responsible inside job but you still have to put yourself first yeah and then the second thing is you have to um, respect the other person's limits so you can't do only one you can't only put yourself first when you don't respect the other person's limits so that respecting the other person's limits is the indirect route because you use the indirect route as a um, um, neurological cue reading mechanism to see what's going on in the other person so you see What's their response? You hear what's their sound. You just see their body flipping or not flipping. You see them like a dead fish. You um, sense the muscle tone. You have an energy. You have a visceral response to some to some people, more or less. So that the indirect route is literally being capable of feeling the other person's limits. Of course, the limits getting created when we say, hey, may I feel you? And what's your limit? And then the other person said, yeah, don't pinch with your fingernail my skin between, you know, because uh, so then there is a verbal um, communicated limit. And that's important to have that in place that people can speak their limits. But, you know, <laughs> I don't know where I did that. I think... I think we did that in the first module in the year training. This is where it came up. So if if you ask somebody, hey, I just want to touch you. May I feel you? What's your limit? And then you're just like, okay, wait a second. My limits, page one, page two, page three, page 533. So, you know, you just sit there for the rest of the day and speak about the limits that you might have that you don't want to have on your body. So there is no engagement happening. So when it comes to touch and connection, just like, yeah, it's just like checking in that people have the um, resources to speak their limits. And that, um, that does not include all limits altogether. And to be capable of feeling somebody else's limits as a yes, that you can actually operate within your own set of desire, you need the indirect route to tune into other people. And, and you know, even if you put yourself first, I don't know, you ask Lisa, can I be selfish on 100%? Um, I don't know if I can put that in numbers. Maybe it's 60%, 60-40, maybe it's 50-50. Maybe sometimes when I have a very sensitive person I want to play with, I just only put myself first, maybe 30%, and be more in respect for somebody else's limit because if somebody shuts down neurologically then i have then i don't have fun anyway and i choose to go for less that i can go for something better than nothing as if somebody shuts down so that the indirect route is this this you know what 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 most people have used their entire life to please other people to belong and be loved where they have used this action to fit in somehow, to be the good girl, the pleaser and all that, so that we can use that neurologically when we have this kind of thought where upgrade in communicating and neurological upgrade and feeling ourselves, that we then can use the indirect route as a superpower because we are so fine-tuned 
that we can feel somebody else's cues professionally, relational, and with anybody we're engaging with. And this is, a, this is not only playing in the three minute game, this is, this is in life everywhere. And all of a sudden the indirect route becomes an, a barometer of cue, actually like an assessment tool. It becomes super sharp because we know if, if you know, um, you know when this when this part of the the feeling center, the insula, this part where we compassion and empathetic can tune in is getting activated, then we can feel what's going on. We know in, as a visual response when something is off, and we can speak it. Something is not adding up here. I need to communicate that. This is what I came up with. So you have to put yourself first. You have to respect somebody else's limits. They both things go together. You have to put yourself first as a direct route and you have to respect the other person's limit. That's the indirect route being capable of reading through your neuroception, let's say it that way, through your capacity to feel into other people. The same way how we want to be felt from other people when we're being touched. So I want to be considered when I'm touched where my limits are. All right, that's uh, what I wanted to share today. Any reflections, 